Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for VMware Explore 2024. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with my co-host Dave Vellante, two sets of coverage. Phil Trigovic is here, SVP, and Brock Mowry is the CTO of Tintry, a company we've covered many times on theCUBE. Now back and continuing to stay in the game, now part of DDN. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us on theCUBE here live guys. at VMware Explore. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. us. So I love this session, I was looking forward to it. I saw it on the calendar, Kubernetes, our favorite topic. Of course, we were there, present at creation of the original KubeCon when Linux Foundation established a CNCF, and it's an ecosystem, and it's really powering cloud native. Kubernetes kind of getting boring, which means it's working, and cloud native microservices and now containers now powering this next gen uh, foundational system. So there's a lot of conversations like, hey, forget the dogma, I just need the foundation built so I can get Gen AI data models up there. Yes. Yep. So there's a lot of pressure in that community to say, don't make, fight those w dogmatic wars around this, that, and other thing. Just give me Kubernetes, <laughs> okay, running at scale. This is kind of what you guys are doing. Give us an update on Tintree. Yeah, so you know, from the business front, you nailed it in that when we're seeing this across the stack, from biggest enterprise down through midsize, even to the smalls, are investigating the possibility of Kubernetes deeply. But what they're getting to a point of is that the non-cloud infrastructure or platform entropy that we're experiencing with these three tier architectures that we've been bound to since 1990 uh, do not allow you to progress into those, those applications uh, in any way that makes sense financially or talent pool wise. And uh, yes, that's what Tintry's been focused on and what Brock's been focused on for the last three years is getting our QoS an ability to, to control those lanes uh, exposed to those applications and move that forward. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that the Tintry has always been known for is its intelligence of the workload that's running over top of it. Yeah. Uh, we, we're trying to bring that same intelligence into the Kubernetes space, being able to show uh, performance and, and latency information at the PV level within the Kubernetes environment. And that's something that we don't see yeah. out in the environment. Our friend Jeff Jonas <laughs> says, entropy's winning. Yeah, entropy's winning, it absolutely is <laughs> so, winning. So, uh, <laughs> how do you balance the score? <laughs> Well, that's the unknown. That's part of the part of, of either whichever side of the entropy scale you want to be on. You want to raise it or lower it. You know, it's it's not necessarily good or bad either way. Right now, our industry and our globe is stuck on an architecture that was designed and started to be architected in the '80s. Yeah. It is like still to this day three tier plus cloud, so three tier plus ASP, three tier plus whatever going back. How we're doing that is decoupling that stack. So our intelligence goes from the application down all the way through the storage to into the backup. If you want to monitor that as well. All statistics on the app, all performance stats, all localities, et cetera, that you got with VMware on us is being extended into those workloads. Yeah. That's important because with VMware, any x86 architecture, you've got uh, NVMe as an option, you've got you know, a SCSI bus fi or a SCSI fiber channel, et cetera. The limitations on the command queuing for those is going to prevent this from ever happening. Because even on NVMe where you're at 68,000 or whatever it is, streams, you're talking 1.2 billion sometimes streams or zillions of points that have yeah. to be processed to deliver a result. Cannot happen the way that, yeah. that and I'm talking globally, is architected. Phil, get the energy conversation. Before we get into the, some of the conversation, I want us just uh, reset on Tintry. Uh, we, have an, we had an old say, I'm dating myself when I say this. You know, when something changed, you say, I want to show the new Polaroid picture of what, what I am or what we are. <laughs> now it's, what's the new Instagram photo of Tintry? Give us the update because, you know, we covered Tintry, great product leadership at a time where that market was surging, obviously from storage and changing in with, hyper, with the hyperscalers and then the hyperconvergence. Now, as part of DDN acquiring you guys, you're back on the front lines again with the product market fit happening. Give us the update, what's the new Instagram of Tintree? Well, a little bit of because it's more on the technical side for the company. Yeah, so we, we've, uh, we wanted to take a, a focus, again, back to the core product uh, and then expand it out uh, to be able to support multiple environments. And it, it just so happened there was a hypervisor shakeup here recently, lots of conversation around it. Prior to that happening, we already started looking at this saying, hey, we need to expand our support for these other hypervisors. We have very deep support with Hyper-V uh, and a couple other hypervisors, but there was some other ones that people were asking about key support in that area, so we've bolstered our support in that, uh, that capability. But then, we bring in the container support. We did a, a, a round with Tanzu. Uh, our most recent here that we're talking about now is generic Kubernetes via CSI, and uh, we're, we're starting to get into a lot of great conversations. Those there. are engineered solutions with Tanzu. Uh, well, the original one was with Tanzu. Now this, this announcement with our CSI now is actually generic 
community Kubernetes through through CSI. Talk about that announcement real quick. Give, a, give an update on that. Um, so we're uh, we're in the final stages of this release, but uh, we've basically been able to uh, create a CSI driver that can consume storage off of our platform, do all the provisioning, everything like any Kubernetes ad admin would expect, um, but we also bring the power of Tintree, the QoS, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, the snapshots. Some of the other things that I've challenged my engineering team was, you know, look, we've got both of these environments sitting on top of us, why does somebody need to duplicate or move data to do a, uh, an app migration or something like that? So uh, we're looking at the ability to snapshot data out of a virtual machine and populate a persistent volume. That could be huge for companies that are trying to move large data sets in and out of Kubernetes like environments. Like who, give an example of a customer and yeah. what their problem statement would be for that. Um, we've seen some customers that, uh, you know, we'll use the AI model as an example. Yeah. You generate some of these models and you've got these large data sets. Well, at some point you need to duplicate that data set so other teams can do other things with it. VM Store shines there. We can do a zero capacity impact clone of that data, as well as protect both the IOs uh, uh, to that data set and be able to provide uh, the ability for two different teams to interact with the same data, but have it separated. So if I recall, so Tintree's innovation early on was you guys, you guys were really focused on simplicity and kind of beat the market back when it was before all the cartel got a hold of all the, you know, Vasa <laughs> APIs and then. Cartel. And then, well, it's true. And, and, <laughs> that's, yes, yes, and, yes. and that's what happened. Yes. And then, so you guys were, were ahead of the market and then all of a sudden it's sort of the, the, the API integration commoditized everything. Yeah. Sounds like you're now taking that concept up the stack yeah. and, and driving new value. Yeah. Yes, because if you, you guys have been with us for a long time and covered us for, since the beginning pretty much. Um, the foundational principle of Tintree was to eliminate a huge waste back that was generated basically the way VMware was architected with the way the IOQs were happening to the storage. Processor wastage, why did VMware come to be? Never we sure. had Pentium Pros, you know, you guys know this. Yeah, In yeah. 2000 we haven't improved our processor yeah. speeds much. Right. Yeah. Like, incremental, and the energy sucked. The amount of greenhouse gases we pump in to get a tenth of a percent in the gigahertz is completely unnecessary. Yeah. Same was true when, when uh, Tintry was founded, when VMware came out and reduced that and started using those processors more. Yeah. So where are we now? These processors and the infrastructure cannot handle it without that, com that queuing that happens on the back end. It cannot, there's too many queues and that's what our specialty is, is the intelligence behind yeah. those data sets. And acceleration too, I mean. Paramount to success. It's funny, in GTC, you know, NVIDIA's banking, oh, accelerated computing. I mean, all this uh, innovations around the system now, not just one thing. Oh. And so you're starting to see this clustered system Come become together. the supercomputing, which puts more pressure on the cloud native community because now, you know, hey, the horsepower's here mm -hmm. and the distributed systems now are working well. Let's get, <laughs> let's get the Kubernetes layer to orchestrate. This is now pressure on KubeCon. I mean, KubeCon's been doing great, but it feels like it's at a moment where Hey guys, we just got to unify this, just no more discussion, here's what it is. And VMware is very much in the mix of this too. Like, do I run VMware in a container or do I run it with Tanzu? So, what's your take on this? Because this is the forcing function. It's almost like, if this doesn't happen, we can't go to the next level. Well, we, we keep going, you know, okay, I'm going to digress on this a minute, because if you, if you guys covered like uh, Grok or Cerebras. Yes, or absolutely. How about Cerebras? Just their news this Cerebras, morning on the yeah. inference engine. Yeah, 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 Cerebras, absolutely. their inference engine they launched today, it's NVIDIA Click Killer. It's amazing. Yes. I mean, we're, right. they, those guys pumped out 1.2 trillion transistors on a, it's a big platter, right? Yep. What's the issue for most enterprises though? Is they're not going to be able to afford these platters that do this. Those are going to yeah. train the models. So we're at an inflection point in the market that we both think happened around 2019, where you've seen this, this training craze, and it's, amazing what we're going to solve with this. This is a good thing, it's not bad. They've got all the efficiencies, that they know what they're doing to spit these models out. When you try to pour it over to enterprise where you don't have 50 PhDs who are familiar, who have wrote Kubernetes, you know, whatever the situation is, managing and deploying yeah. these systems, like the talent pool, the brain trust to deliver, it's not there yet. So yeah. we simplify where you don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah. Just like we did with VMware, Citrix. The and parallels everything. are amazing. I used yeah, to say, guys, you it need is. guys in lab coats to figure out what happened at the I.O. level if something went wrong. Well, it's it, it, it's serendipity. Where we need the intelligence yeah. at the I.O. level. Yeah. yeah. So, it, and then be able to provide that information back to the infrastructure to automatically adjust and optimize. One of the areas you guys are, you guys are uh, on that's interesting is that you know DevOps, now DevSecOps, it's about operations. Yeah. VMware's in that ops world. You guys are in that, yeah how to make operations better, and now that data 
is becoming part of the developer equation, we see that the data engineering is going on with platform engineering. So you're seeing a, a nexus of those two worlds coming in. These, these aren't analytics data scientists. We're talking about coders, yeah. system coders doing data engineering. Yep. So you got kind of this overlap in platform engineering and data engineering emerging. One, thoughts on that, and two, how do you operationalize this? <laughs> God, man. <laughs> you know, it, it's, how much time we got? No, yeah, right. got two days, I could, I could cover the developer. Brock, we need an algorithm done by the end of the right. interview. Well, you know, and everybody who's in tech is, yeah. is experiences from one side or the other. Uh, DBAs, developers, infrastructure. Your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault. Your fault. <laughs> it's just, yeah. They're all right, that's been the problem. Unless you're on Tentry where we can tell you exactly where that is falling down. And that's where the intelligence is critical because these workloads and these data sets are exponentially going to explode. It's not going to get easier to manage yeah. this stuff. It's yeah. going to get more difficult so manageability if you don't have is the intelligence. Key. So manageability. Intelligence of the data set's key. Okay. Even before, yeah. I would say, me, before management's key, you have to know what you're trying to accomplish. Because what, what was it, the, uh, the, the, what was the paper where it was like a, a, Z, a zettabyte output file to run whatever it was running? What do you, who's going to manage that? Yeah. What are you going to do? What do you do when you have to shard that out to get recency of data? All of these things require intelligence that the enterprise do not have. So where's that intelligence come from? What's the sort of secret sauce underneath? Well, so VM Store has uh, traditionally been a product that has incorporated a form of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and it manages those IO queues. It optimizes that workload across our appliance entirely. So that is one area that we see is, is going to help that industry. The other one is other technologies to help bypass some of these or eliminating layers. You know, you look at the AI uh, uh, GPU architecture right now, you've got uh, x86 bypass with direct GPU storage they're going to have to come up with other types of architectures that get past that x86 barrier that allow the front end and the back end to work simultaneously and extremely fast. Because, because the x86 is controlling everything, right? It's, you're saying right it's, now it is, it it's, it's kind the of the roadblock. Memory, it's the bottleneck. Yep. We just did a SuperCloud 7 on um, the future data platform where we were kind of saying the modern data stack is dead. Because uh, you look at companies like Uber, you have a lot of heterogeneous things on a data store. And then you have all these new system architectures around chips and gear, compute, right. networking, and storage. Yep. Okay, <laughs> what is an intelligent data platform look like as you guys see it? Because this is what I see happening and you guys are in the middle of it. I mean, what, what, what does a, a company do to invest in a generational foundation to get there? Because we, have, we hear from customers, hey, we're built for the next 10 years. We, don't want, we want to have a solid foundation. That's why the Kubernetes discussion is, solve it, just get it up and running. Yep. I want to build on top. What's your thoughts? Brock, we'll start with you. Um, is, you know, there's, there's uh, I, I'm blanking. <laughs> I lost it, sorry. Okay, I'm going to bring up a project. Brock and I have been involved in some really large projects, one with one of the biggest energy companies in the, in the, uh, in the country. This is five years ago? Yeah. Um, they were converting the, uh, I, mean, I don't know how much of this I can say on, like, can you guys edit this or is this no, live? No, it's live. Oh, we're oh, live. live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I love nothing better than a live show. Generalities. Generalities. So one of the large, the, uh, the company that basically runs most of our nation's power grid, containerized back in what, 28, started in 2018, 2019. Yeah, they so were early adoption. Early. 175 people to do this, this conversion. So it was very difficult back then. It was very uh, resource intensive and require a lot of skill and a lot of oopses and a lot of things, but now that's the standard. And what that's done is it decouples all the server requirements, a lot of the network requirements, and a lot of the end user nonsense that you have to go to. So even with that staff, the, R, the ROI, the TCO on it still made sense. And like the tenure one's insane. It's an order of magnitude reduction in cost and management once you get it stood up. So my advice to businesses that are now starting this journey, just start the journey. Pick one application to start, call experts, get us involved, and let's start looking so at it. What it would be decomposing it and decoupling it was the strategy there that worked for them. Yeah, but it was an army to, to get it done. And again, this is a massive yeah. scale, you know, I don't even know what the budget was, but it was a huge yeah. project. Greatly successful though, and the return yep. on it was insane what they saw when it was done. What about, so, so it's interesting, I want to pick up on something John was saying about the new data stack. Because we've written, I thought, beginning to think a lot about this, where everybody's talking about agents, like as a co-pilot, but not a lot of people are talking about like multiple swarms of agents working together, and to make that work, you're going to have to tap into some of the back-end systems and get to the data. If what I understand, if you can containerize that and make it easy for the up the stack application developers to get access to that data, then it can be harmonized. That's not your job to harmonize it, but so that 
you know, revenue means revenue, right? So that we're not in a meeting arguing about, whoa, what's that mean? Is that bookings or revenue? And you know, I mean, it right. means the same thing. So that's somebody else's problem, but you guys can help connect to that data and surface it so that it can be harmonized and then agents can actually operate on it. It can be governed and again, that's not your purview, but the starting point is that infrastructure to surface that data. Right, you, absolutely. You, you nailed it, and it, it's, it's simply done, versus having to go and write a script that would go from the ceiling to the floor on how to access a set of data blocks. Like, we could turn that on tomorrow. So, you think about John's example of Uber, you got riders, drivers, ETAs, destinations, transactions, dollars, they're all different data elements. And that, companies. That sit inside of different systems, and Uber had to write the 170 people, like the energy yeah. company you talked about, they had armies of engineers who had to develop that, we think the future is you know, Uber for all, right? And, but the back end has to get solved before any of that works. Yes, yep. so. big time, because that, that back end process that you're speaking of is exponentially growing like by the week, because we keep adding new data sets to it. And Brock was saying something earlier that's really important, is the criticality of being able to manage and recover those data sets in their original state yep. is, is going to be like, First and foremost, because if somebody gets in and changes something that you're running a trained model against, you poisoned that model and that entire effort is out the window. Yeah. So it's incredibly difficult to track that now without something like what we do. How is the DDN DNA, you know, the HPC DNA, which you've talked a lot and about, they're they're at GTC. coming together oh, they're, they're, with, they're, with AI? I mean, it just seems like they, they, yeah. the, there's a huge tailwind for DDN. How has that DNA affected you guys? Where do you guys fit in that DDN Portfolio. Do you remember the split? I, the split I was talking about. Yeah. That's what's perfect about the, yeah. the relationship. They are the masters of that world. I don't go there. We don't go into that space. <laughs> but they own it, and they're fantastic at yeah. it, and they support what we're doing. And we own the enterprise space, the deployment space. So the, the marriage of the two is like. Yeah. It's interesting because they've always wanted luck. to get into that space, and they try to take their novel, high performance architecture into the yeah. enterprise. It didn't work. So the acquisition of the IP that yeah. they picked up from Tintree has really? enabled them to get into that market. And they made a couple of other acquisitions too, I believe. But yeah, yeah, they have, yeah. They, they, they do on occasion. Um, I th the focus for us now, like a DDN, speaking on a bigger picture for DDN is exactly what we said. Yeah. They're going to own that space and they are getting there with NVIDIA as partner and you know, all the good stuff for the training yeah. dimension of it. And these data They're platforms the, the and these data platforms are emerging too as it has all the storage, all the infrastructure underneath yes. and there's all that kind of squishy stuff that you guys do that's in there. It's a nice little bolt-on yeah. with yeah. DDN. Yeah, no it really is. They did, very, very smart of them so to have AI's got some good data. business for you guys now? You get, get some yeah, match with some uh, AI business? Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, also <laughs> a, there's also a bright spot for the VM store as well because when you start getting into the, the lower end enterprise AI, if you will, VM store shines when you have multiple science projects going on on top of it because of that quality yeah, yeah. of service at the font. You're fox. enabling value up on top, up right. top of you. But then we complement the DDN side because we don't step on their territory, they don't step in ours. They are the big iron, yeah. we are the, the uh, training environment, I mean, or the uh, testing environment. You give flexibility to the customer to architect whatever they want. Yeah, that's what's beautiful. We've got yeah. the one-stop yeah. shop for it yeah. all the way up through the, the app stack, up yeah. to the network. One-two so punch. And what's, a lot of expertise. How's Alex doing? <laughs> doing great. Did, did he help you buy that suit? Because, yeah, man, he's got taste. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's unbelievable. You Alex guys got a uh, stylish guy. Just, just, Man in IT and tech. He is, you know, he really no is. No doubt. And you get he Joseph George over there now from cat. HPE. Yes. yes. Cube alumni Joseph George. Better yep. him. So, he just got, came over. Anyway guys, great to have you on. Oh, Final thanks. question, give a plug for Tintry real quick while you're here. I know you got all new stuff up, it's still the same game, but no, new ball game on the field. What's new, Give a, put a plug in for Tintry. What's new or give you a Tintry yeah. plug? Plug, both. All right, just plug. call us yeah. for the intelligent aspect if you want to. Uh, get into the uh, uh, rapidly adopting, or rapidly being adopted space of containers. We are the easiest path to do that. Yeah. All right. Easy button for data management. That's really what it comes down That's to. It's a bumper sticker all about right the data. there. Like, we don't Love care that about the hardware. Sticker. That's a New York Post about. headline. <laughs> 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 all right guys, thanks for coming on. Okay, thanks, we'll be back with more coverage. We'll be right back with our next guest. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Thank you.